Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's an exciting day because I'm releasing my high-level architecture for Microsoft Cloud App Security. So in this video, we're gonna walk through that together. Let's jump into it. Now, when I think about Microsoft Cloud App Security, uh, it is really a multi-tool for IT security. And in the upper left-hand corner here, these are just the high-level capabilities of MCAS. Now, what I find really interesting about the product is that it can go out and integrate with third-party SaaS apps, and here's just a, some of those they can integrate with. Now, it can forward alert data to your security operations platforms, such as Azure Sentinel, maybe I have a uh, legacy security information event management system, and even an XDR or extended detection response platform like Microsoft 365 Defender. So let's break down each one of these capabilities. Let's start with shadow IT discovery and control. So MCAS can actually go out and discover SaaS application usage within your environment. And it does that by collecting data from data sources. So one of the data sources could be Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, which as you know, is built into Windows 10. And when it's integrated with MCAS, it can send all of that network data from that client to MCAS. So you can see what apps are in use. Now, if you have a firewall or a proxy that users are sitting behind, that data can then be forwarded to what we call a log collector, which can then be forwarded up to MCAS. Now, we can also collect that data through a REST API. And one of my favorites is through a secure web gateway, like a Zscaler or a Karata or a Menlo Security or an IBOS. Those have native integrations with MCAS. Now, once I collect the data, MCAS will go through and perform app risk scoring on that data. So in other words, for the apps that it detects that are in use in my environment, it will help me understand on a scale of one to 10, with one being the most risky and 10 being the least risky, what the risk level is of that app. And it gives me a nice score. And then from there, I can make an intelligent decision. Do I want to allow the app or do I want to block it? Now I can actually block that app using a variety of methods. If I click block, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint will actually block that app and uh, wherever that user may be on that device. Now I can also create a script directly out of MCAS to run on my firewall to block it. And then there's some integrations with those secure web gateways I talked about to be able to block app usage. So that's Shadow IT Discovery and Control. Again, I have more videos where I go deeper into that. So be sure to check out my channel for that. Let's talk about information protection for a moment. This is a really interesting capability. This is where MCAS, Microsoft Cloud App Security, can go out and discover sensitive data across your files, across those different SaaS apps in the environment. So if I choose to integrate Google Workspace or even Salesforce with MCAS, I can then go out and discover sensitive data in those files, in those SaaS services, and then apply data loss prevention controls to it. So for example, I can use the built-in DLP engine or even the data classification service to discover that data, maybe look for file fingerprints, uh, do exact data matching, do uh, sensitive information type matching, uh, all sorts of different methods to discover that data and then apply rights management to it through Microsoft Information Protection, which as you know, will actually encrypt that data. Or I can integrate this with my external DLP system to be able to bring in those controls as well. So once I discover the apps that are in use, I can then integrate with those apps and then I can provide data protection capabilities within those apps. Now, when it comes to accessing those apps that have been integrated, there's some amazing secure access capabilities here. And this is where MCAS can integrate with your identity provider to provide some real-time control. So if I go to maybe download a file in that app, well, I could block that. Or copy and pasting data in and out of that app, blocking things like chat in the app, even printing, and some other capabilities. Now, I can also uh, govern access based on the state of the device. Uh, is the device managed? Does it have the appropriate certificates on it? So on and so forth. And I can even pull in signals from other Microsoft products like Microsoft Endpoint Manager to understand, well, is that device compliant with my IT policy? Do I want to allow secure access to that app or not? And then one of my favorites here is this also works for apps that are on premises. Remember using Azure Active Directory App Proxy as well, which I'll talk about in an additional video. 
When it comes to adaptive access, this is a new capability that was announced at Ignite 2021. And this uses Azure Active Directory authentication context. And this is where during a session in the app, if you go to access maybe something that's sensitive, like a sensitive document, we can actually step up the authentication and prompt you with multi-factor authentication at that time when you go to access that sensitive resource. Now, one of my other favorite things to be able to do here is being able to be adaptive on the type of OS and web browser that you're using. So if you're using an operating system that is outdated, we can actually block access to the app. If you're using a version of a web browser that's outdated, we can block access to the app along with other controls. So let's move over to security posture management. This is pretty awesome. This is where I can run security configuration assessments for Google Workspace, AWS, and Azure to be able to understand what does my posture look like on those platforms and are there any security recommendations that I need to go and, and take. Basically, help me understand are there any security gaps there when it comes to best practices that I might want to go out and fill. And then as from an identity perspective, uh, MCAS will integrate with Microsoft Defender for Identity, which, as you know, will look at your Windows Server Active Directory environment, and it will help me understand misconfigurations there, uh, if there's anything like exploitable components, maybe uh, passwords are being sent in clear text, uh, that sort of thing. This can help me identify that. And then from a threat protection perspective, this is where MCAS can go through and actually scan user activity in an app and understand what do anomalies look like? Uh, are you trying to do a mass download of data? Are you trying to go through and do something that's not normal for you? And then from a malware detection perspective, when you go to uh, download a file, we can actually scan it for malware and uh, then block it if it contains malware. And same thing with upload as well. Now, OAuth is a big deal. Uh, I'm pretty passionate about that myself. And so this is where we can actually give you visibility over OAuth apps that are in Office 365, Salesforce, and Google Workspace, and then give you controls to be able to govern those OAuth apps, whether or not you want to allow users to, uh, to be able to use them. And my absolute favorite capability here is from a UEBA or user entity and behavioral analytics perspective, being able to go through and identify suspicious behavior happening in the environment, such as maybe Matt is trying to uh, download a massive amount of data. He's logging in from an anonymous IP address. Uh, maybe he's doing some other suspicious things. All of those signals can come together in MCAS. And then from there, I can enable some policy to maybe go out and automatically take action. So folks, at a high level, those are the capabilities of Microsoft Cloud App Security. And from an architectural perspective, this is how I want you to think about it. This is how I think about it. And it's a great way to visualize it. A couple of notes about this diagram. Number one, up here in the upper right-hand corner, this was released in May of 2021. It's version one. I fully expect additional revisions for this in the future. Number two, there's some links here to some amazing resources, the ninja training, the best practices, the explainer video series, use cases, even the technical documentation. Take advantage of that for me. And then lastly, this is a PowerPoint slide. As you hover over these different items, it will actually be a hyperlink that you can click on to go out and access the technical documentation for it. So there's a lot more to this than what I'm showing on this slide, but this is at a high level. Now in the future, I'm gonna release additional diagrams that will go into data flows and technical details for each one of these major capabilities. So please stay tuned for that. Okay, I'll put a link in the video description for where you can download this. Please use it, give us feedback. I wanna know how it works for you. And I really appreciate you sticking around and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.